Do you want to know what frustrates me? The fact that it took me until my fifth year on the robotics team to become captain. Do you want to know what infuriates me? The fact that girls on my team are so seldom treated like engineers that belong there that they end up either quitting or resorting to non-technical jobs. Do you want to know what makes me want to scream? The fact that no matter how valuable my ideas were, they were only considered important by my fellow students when voiced with far more testosterone than a voice which I could produce. Joining robotics in eighth grade was actually the best decision I've made so far in my life because it taught me a lot about overcoming challenges and defying stereotypes. I couldn't be more proud of where I stand today as captain of the student-run team of 60 students from three high schools working together to build a new robot each year, manage a $40,000 yearly budget, and promote the values of STEM, science, technology, engineering, and math, buzzword, education for all genders. But hold on for one second because... Let me just say, it took a very long time and a few teary-eyed meltdowns to get to where I am today, to gain that respect. <sighs> the journey to captainship had a lot of obstacles. When I first joined the team in 8th grade, there were three other girls on the team. Just three. That's four, including me none of who had technical jobs, i.e. mechanics, electronics, programming, none of that. I had this association with being a little sister on the team because my brother, who at the time was a junior, was mechanic mechanics lead. So everyone expected me to be just like him. And they were all excited to have another Jake <laughs> on the team because he contributed greatly to the robot. I don't deny that. But they were super surprised to find out I wanted nothing to do with mechanics side of the team. I found new jobs in areas that we now call the business side of the team. Um, I wanted to enhance our team image by making us look good in every way possible, online, in person, and on the robot. I worked on our website and created social media profiles. I designed t-shirts and even painted faces, and I was the team cheerleader in the mascot at competition. I even decorated the robot to fit with our animal theme name that year. But these ideas were new and unusual for a technically focused and very male-dominated team. It was hard to gain leverage for them. It was hard for anyone whose job it was to, um, to design and build a robot to even consider the big picture of our team. It makes sense, right? I guess so. Not to mention the fact that all of the technical leads were boys, and most of them considered my job to be a girl's job, whatever that means. But what they didn't understand was that this girl's job was so crucial to raising any significant money from our sponsors to make all of their jobs possible. Fortunately, I was able to work through that challenge and create a position for myself on the leadership team. I was logistics lead, and as logistics lead, I began integrating my ideas for the big picture into the engineering process on our team. Alright, so what's next? Shouldn't I have been satisfied with my new job and helping the team in this way? Of course not. Of course not. Even though I held a leadership role, my ideas were only implemented in my own work. For the longest time, I had stressed the importance of having a well-rounded team. I stated and restated over and over again why it was so crucial that we put more effort into things like community outreach and social media. But nobody did anything about it. Nobody wanted to write letters to their family to raise money for the team. Nobody wanted to cheer or dance or paint their face at competition, even then when even when they reflect it out loud that they think our team should be more spirited. Nobody wanted to rearrange the electronics components on the robot frame to make our side panels stick better, 
But then when they fell off in competition, um, they complained to me that they thought they weren't even necessary in the first place when that's where our sponsor logos go. So, sure, I had gained the respect I needed to put my ideas into action on my own, but I getting the rest of the team to listen to me and do what I was asking of them was much harder because, well, I'm a girl. The sexism that occurred in this environment was so subtle that I myself didn't even truly recognize it until like a couple weeks ago. It's that bad. I noticed the trends in female participation and how we kind of tend to stray away from the technical side of the team, but I could never diagnose why it was happening, let alone cure the problem. So since I could never know why this was happening, I just had to work even harder to overcome this obnoxious, foggy issue. And with perseverance, I prevailed. After two years of being logistics lead, I applied for the role of captain and earned it. It was six girls and 38 boys. It was my ideas not just making sense to people, but being executed by people. It was successful business and successful robots. It was an end to girl jobs and boy jobs because no boy on any team I was in charge of could ever exclude a girl from what she wants to do. I sat down the other day at lunch with a group of six new girls and I told them the following advice because, look, I'm not blaming anyone for this because I still can't really put my finger on the issue but I'm telling you now, it's going to be very hard for you to get a job on this team. It's going to be very hard for you to find your place. You're going to have to wedge your way into those groups of boys if you want a technical job. If you know that working on the robot is what you want to do, you have to work that much harder to make it happen. I'm here to help you. You can do it, but it's all on you. The mentors told me that when I, when I joined the team, the mentors told me that if the boys gave me a hard time, whatever that means, I could always tell them about it. But the boys never purposely gave me a hard time. It's not like they purposely said, Sydney, you can't work on the robot because you're a girl. It's just there was this invisible cloud of discouragement that only rains on girls around here. So all I can say is take the initiative. Take the initiative, take the initiative, take the initiative is all I can say because do what you think you do best. You wedge your way into those groups, you find your spot, and you do it. We're here to help you but you have to try. Don't let them discourage you, even if it seems like they're not trying to. Don't let it get to you. Don't let being a girl surrounded by 50 some odd boys get to you on a team because you will be probably way more successful than, the, than them anyway because you had to work harder to get there. So do it. Put in the extra effort and just know that I feel for you. Thanks, you guys, for watching. I am reading off a first draft of my personal statement for college, so that's probably why I was staring at the floor a lot or at my bed. But um, thanks again, and um, yeah, goodbye.